Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 93 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm recording this on Sunday. Uh, rare that I do that these days. I've normally been pretty good recording them on Thursdays and Fridays, but uh, today we're doing a current day actually on Sunday Spearhead Sundays podcast. Uh, I'm at my girl's house um, on her couch. She's out at the moment. I think she's getting brunch with her little brother, which, you know, I don't know. I don't get brunch. But you know what You know what brunch is? Brunch is for, for cunts who are too unorganized and lazy to get up before breakfast time. Brunch is for people who, who who sleep in until like 12 and then they just, they're fucking starving. They can't wait until like 1 p.m. regular lunchtime and it's too late for breakfast, but their their, their body is like, hey, I'm, I'm uh, pretty sure that you and I are starving to death, so uh, can we get some fucking food, please? That's what brunch is for and wankers as well, I think. Uh, anyway, what's been going on with you guys, huh? How's how was your weekend? Pretty good. What did you do on Saturday? Did you party? Did you go? Did you go out with your friends? Did you organize to have a go to a nightclub with your mates? Like, oh, bro, let's go to fucking, let's go to fucking douchebag land. Yeah, man, I love douchebag land. And then you all you all have pre drinks because the drinks at douchebag land are too fucking expensive. And you dress up in your shitty long t-shirts. What's with those long t-shirts, guys? Where the fuck did that trend come from? Has a single person ever looked good in those fucking long t-shirts? Why do they, what do you need a long t-shirt for? Someone tell me that. Why do you need a long t-shirt and why do you only ever see retards in nightclubs wearing them? It looks like a fucking dress, man. It looks like a dress that doesn't fit you. It's like, oh, instead of getting a form-fitting t-shirt that actually fits me, why don't I get a t-shirt that, uh, instead of stopping at the waist, like a regular t-shirt, I'm going to make it stop halfway down my fucking thighs. You know what it is? <laughs> it, those t-shirts are about to, as, uh, are basically the same as the dresses that girls wear to nightclubs. Like, if you, if, guys, if you were to take your pants off, it'd expose half your asshole, which is basically what women are wearing to clubs. <laughs> clubs at the moment. Oh my god, I look so good. Where did you get it from? Fashion Nova? Yeah. I saw it in a fucking Instagram ad. A micro influencer showed me. Micro influencers. Have you guys seen that shit? Those fucking micro influencers on on Instagram, those people with like 5,000 followers. <laughs> and because you know what the brands have worked out that it, 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 they can make more money out of these fucking micro-influencers because they don't have to pay them. So there's all these fucking wannabe Instagram whores with 5,000 likes on, on, on inst followers on Instagram posting photos of their tits, but they're like sevens. You know, they're not 11s, they're not so they're never going to hit that million. I feel like we've followed everyone. I'm not impressed by hotness anymore. I used to, you, do, you, do you guys remember before Instagram... Where you would see like a stunningly beautiful woman in the street and you would be like, what the fuck is that? Oh my lord. Like your jaw would drop. You'd look at this girl and you'd be like, "How? are you even real? Are you even, re do you know what you look, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And you'd walk past them and you'd look at them and you'd be like, man, that made my day. But now I see those girls, because you see them everywhere on Instagram, like every day. You look at the Explore fucking tab and you can see at 11s galore. Like it's just fucking 11s all over the place. It's even worse than movies. Like you used to see beautiful women in movies, but you'd be like, oh yeah, she's famous. I'll never meet her. But now you see 11s on the regular every day, just scrolling through Instagram so now when I see, like, a, a beautiful woman in the street, I just think, nah, she's probably a bitch. <laughs> she's probably posting fucking photos of her drinking fit tea. Dehydrating herself so, so she has the outline of abs for one fucking sponsored Instagram post that she makes 30 grand from. But yeah, the, the brands have figured out that uh, micro-influencers are the way to go. I was reading about it. They were saying that, uh, you know, they can make more money out of sponsoring, like, 
I don't know, a thousand micro influencers with 5,000 followers because instead of paying them, they just send them free shit. And as the person with 5,000 followers is like, hey, I think I should be paid to advertise your product. They're like, huh, you only have 5,000 followers. Why would we pay you? Gee, I don't know. Because you're making money out of it, you fucking animals. This podcast is, is off to a weird start. I'm going between abusing women for being attractive and standing up for Instagram models. <laughs> Pay those bitches what they're worth, okay? They're wearing your fucking ugly clothing that you get online. Probably built by some Vietnamese nine-year-old. <laughs> Man, this this weekend, uh, I, I'm in Melbourne uh, and the we had like extreme weather warnings again and again and again on Thursday and Friday. They were saying uh, over Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to get torrential rain. There's going to be flooding. It's borderline a natural disaster. You need to make sure... uh, you need to make sure that you're safe at all times. You don't want to drive. Don't drive through flooding because there's going to be flooding. Make sure you leave work early to avoid any kind of natural disasters or dangerous things happening on the way. And like always, they just make this huge fucking deal about how the apocalypse is coming. And it never does. Every Australian reads that shit and is like, nah, it's probably nothing. Like, the, the amount that our governmental weather bureau freaks out, you would think that, um, I don't know, you'd think they'd try and be a little bit more accurate. Every time they say there's going to be a national disaster, a natural disaster, there never is. Like, oh, there's going to be fucking the apocalypse today and nothing happens. It's like a little bit of rain. Dude, it has been raining all day, but it's kind of just been trickling down. Like, it's just nice. I'm sitting in here reading my nerdy science fiction books thinking about what life would be like 40,000 years in the future and uh, listening to the rain. It's fine. You know, the, the way they were talking it up, you'd think my fucking house would be floating down the street. And I think that they do, they do this shit and no Australian takes it seriously anymore. We, we hear like weather reports of the apocalypse is coming, there's going to be tornadoes and tsunamis and earthquakes and we're like, ah, whatever, I'll just wear thongs then instead of going barefoot. That'll be... She'll be right. I swear, the next time there's actually going to be a natural disaster, they're going to put warnings out everywhere and no one's going to take them seriously. Everyone's going to be like, ah, whatever. The f- <laughs> whatever. I remember one time my street flooded. Even You know what? Even when it does flood, even when there actually is a natural disaster, we still don't give a fuck. We just don't. We just don't care about these things, even when they're currently happening. I don't. I, I'm trying to think of what Australia cares about, and I, I'm yet to find it. Maybe the. You know what? I. Th- I think the one thing that people care about is Australia Day. Ah, oh, fucking Australia Day, mate. Have you guys heard about this whole this whole fucking bullshit drama about Triple J changing the top 100 countdown? If you're not Australian. Triple J is our government radio station. It's for the youth. Um, and they just, I don't know. They, it's its for the youth, so they're very like, oh, we need to be inclusive for everyone, and we got to play weird music, and we got to talk about drugs, because we're Triple J, and we're really fucking cool. So they do that whole thing. You know what I'm talking about. It's basically the vice of radio. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can talk, me being on commercial radio, being like, oh, we're, we're actually young and hip. We play pop music. We play one song 35 times in a row. And we, we instead of talking about drugs, we talk about advertising. Um, I don't know. It's all, everything's shit, man. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, Triple J, the, um, the vice of radio, they have a, a Hottest 100 countdown where basically they get all of the listeners to vote what their favorite song is and then they do um, on Australia Day, which uh, while everyone's having a fucking barbecue and drinking with their mates, they play all of the 100 songs in the order of which they were voted in. They don't tell anyone the result until you get to number one. You're like, oh my God, this was the most popular song of the year. Oh, what? It's about drugs. That's so fucking edgy. Um, they do that whole thing. And there's, there's been this big debate in Australia about how we, we should change Australia, the date of Australia Day, because instead of making it the day 
that Australia actually was named Australia and legally became its own country. We celebrate Australia Day on the day that Captain Cook landed and discovered Australia, essentially. And uh, the reason why that's controversial is because Captain Cook was like, oh man, look at this country, this place is fucking sick. Oh, brown people, kill them all! And he just killed all the Aboriginals. He killed all the Aboriginals. So the the whole Aboriginal community, they call it Invasion Day um, instead of Australia Day. And they're like, oh, we're not celebrating how good this country is. We're celebrating the, the time when this fucking white cunt came and killed all of us. Um, and that's pretty fucked up. And you know what? Uh, I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't care about... I, I go back and forth, right? I go back and forth between what I think of this argument. So the Aboriginal community and lots of people who sympathise with them think we should change the day to... I'm pretty sure they want to change it to when Australia was actually officially a country instead of just some place that some English cunt found. Um, And I go back and forth between it. On one hand, I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. It's just a day. Get over it. And then on the other hand, I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. It's just a day. Let's change it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I, I think uh, thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, let's just, why don't we just change it? To me, it actually does make more sense to make Australia Day the day that we actually became Australia, right? Because before then, we were just some place where England used to ship their slaves. And we're like, yeah, well, fuck, I don't know, what are you, steal bread? Yeah, put him on an island with the rapists. That's a fair, that's a fair fucking punishment. <laughs> And I guess it is pretty fucked up. You know what? I don't. I, I don't understand. I don't understand the uh, why. It, let's say we don't change the day. I'm totally fine with Aboriginal people calling it Invasion Day because that's what we did, right? There were people living here. I never. And I, I, under, I understand people like, oh, we shouldn't change the day because it's part of Australian culture. I get that argument, but I don't understand those people cracking it when Aboriginal people call it Invasion Day. Because that's exactly what we fucking did. It's like, there were people here, and they were using the land, and then people with better technology and and bad ethics came and fucking killed everyone because they were brown. Invasion. And then we took the land and we built buildings and shit. That's what an invasion is. I mean, that makes sense. But I don't know. I don't get the whole... I don't get the whole fuss about it. I, I'm kind of like, yeah, why don't we just change the date so we can all stop fucking yelling about it and focus on things that actually matter. It's like, at the end of the day, I didn't do any of that horrible shit. Neither did my dad or his dad or his dad. So, stop yelling at me, okay? I understand that it's kind of shitty that we're celebrating it, but stop trying to make me feel bad for being born in a place with a fucking building, okay? I didn't do none of this shit. That being said, I understand why you're angry. Let's change the day. That's what I think. I don't know. I, maybe I just maybe I just struggle caring about shit. Everyone's like, oh, this is the fucking worst thing ever. It's like, really? Is it? You're typing that on your fucking phone on the Facebook? Who made the phone? It's a 12-year-old working in a fucking building that, she, that they can't even jump out the window of because they'll land in suicide-proof nets. It's like, let me know when you're so suicidal that part of part of your boss's job is to prevent you from killing yourself. <laughs> let me know when your life gets that shit, and maybe I'll start caring about what day we celebrate, whatever the fucking thing is. Patriotism's weird anyway, man. I never got it. I never really I never really celebrated Australia Day at all, which is another reason why I don't give a fuck if they change it. Uh, I, I, when, when Australia Day comes around, I'm like, oh yeah, cool, another day off. I, oh, I don't have a job, so fucking whatever. Like, that's why I never got the argument for why we should keep Australia Day. It's like, dude, it doesn't matter what day it's on. You're just going to be f- <laughs> it's just going to be getting pissed in your backyard eating sausages. Like, it was never really about celebrating how great Australia is and and... Well, actually, it's about celebrating how how good Australia is, because it is one of the best countries. And it's always been about that. It has never been about saying, hey, how good's that Captain Cook cunt? He's pretty good, isn't he? Huh? How good's that guy? He discovered Australia and killed all those Aboriginals? What a sick cunt. No one ever does that on Australia Day. So why are we celebrating it on a day Captain Cook 
did his most fucking his most discovery thing. I couldn't think of a word. You know what? I'm getting nervous now that I'm doing a rant on uh, uh, incorrect information. So I'm actually going to Google why Australia Day is that day. Is that because when he discovered it? Where is it? Um, blah, blah, blah. Where the fuck? I'm looking at the start. This is Australia Day on the government website. Uh, oh my god, they don't have... You know what? They don't... See? Not even on the fucking government's website do they say why... Why it's... Why it's on that day. Because they don't want to acknowledge Captain Cook. Australia Day is about acknowledging and celebrating the contribution that every Australian makes to our contemporary and dynamic nation. From our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who have been here for more than 65,000 years, to those who have lived here for generations, to those who have come from all corners. No, that's definitely not what it's about, okay? It's about getting your mates in the backyard, starting a barbecue, and getting the least drunk guy to cook the sausages. Where are we? All right. Where is he? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lewis has been making a shitty argument for the past 10 minutes. All right, so. See, this is how little Australia Day actually matters because nobody knows why the fuck it actually happens. Where are we? All right, so on the 22nd of August, this is in the 1700s, Captain, Captain James Cook raised the Union Jack on what is now called Possession Island. Dude, that's a rude fucking thing to call an island that you just discovered. That's rude as fuck. Uh, what are we going to call this? I don't know. Object, planet, possession island. Captain Cook's a cunt. All right. So 1770, he discovered it on the 22nd of August. And he, and he was like, oh, this is England. Because I'm pretty sure no one else has been here. All right. Now, the 26th. Okay. Captain Arthur Phillip commander of the first fleet of 11 convict ships from Great Britain and the first governor of New South Wales arrived at Sydney Cove on the 26th of January and raised the Union Jack to be, to signal the beginning of the of the colony. Okay, so oh, okay, so this is when that this is when that fuckhead brought all of the prisoners and and so okay, so dude, that's not Australia Day. That's prison day. That's when <laughs> That's when some fucking asshole brought so brought a bunch of prisoners over and was like, "Hey, this is where we're gonna put the biggest jail ever." That's not anything to celebrate. That sucks. When did it actually become Australia? Um. Yeah, okay, here we go. So in 1818, so what? Fucking, if that happened in, if, if it was 26th of Jan was in the 1788, and then 1818 was when it was called Australia. Yeah, okay, well that's, when they named it, surely that should be when it's Australia Day should actually fucking happen. You know, you notice in all of this in this government website, Aboriginals are not mentioned once, right? <laughs> so they have the first thing they write is like before 1770, so before uh, Australia was discovered by England. It has a big thing about how Aboriginal people have been living here for more than sixty thousand years, which is true, and good on them. Um, and it's good that they acknowledge that. But then from from the moment it's discovered by England, where where is the first mention of Aboriginal people? I've gone through about 300 years of history. No Aboriginal people. Have, here we go. So from 1788 to uh, 1871, Aboriginals are not mentioned once in this governmental history thing because... It, it, every year would have been like, oh, and this was a pretty good massacre over here, but it was it was shortly triumphed by that even bigger massacre over here. I mean, that one was fucking huge. So, 
Oh man, what, and what what's the first mention of Aboriginal people? I bet it's something horrible, like fucking a protest and a violent uprising, because we were treating them like garbage. Where is it? Um, where the fuck are we? Here, eighteen seventy one. The Australian Natives Association formed as a friendly so- friendly society to provide medical sickness and funeral benefits to the native born to the native born of to the native born of European descent. I don't understand what that means. Uh, they became a, a keen advocate of federation from of the Australian colonies. So basically, the first mention from when we landed until 200 years later was when a native society started up and was like, hey, maybe uh, you should stop killing us. That'd be fucking, that'd be really cool if you guys could stop doing that. Maybe just have a think about it. I don't know. And then it took us 200 more years to think about it. Fucking hell. Yeah, like, like yeah, we do have this horrible history with the with the aboriginals. And, and I think that, yeah, I mean, thinking, thinking back on it, now that I've read why we actually celebrate it on the 26th of January, we don't even celebrate it when Australia was discovered. Well, discovered by white people. Um, we celebrate it when some fucking loser from England arrived with 11 ships full of prisoners and started building a fucking prison for them. And making them do slave labor. I mean, that's fucked up for white people. That's not even that's not even fucked up for Aboriginal people. That's like, hey, remember when the slave master brought a whole bunch of prisoners who did nothing wrong, and 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 then and then you know about thirty percent of fucking rapists and started up a prison and forced them to do slave labor. Yeah, that should <laughs> that should be when we celebrate Australia Day. That's fucked up, man. That's so. That's when we celebrate Australia Day. Is when a guy built a giant prison and kept a, made a whole bunch of rapists make crops for no reason. Uh, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So then we should. I guess. I guess we should change it. Here, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go through the history of Australia and I'm gonna tell you where we should change it to. Um. Yeah. Eighteen eighteen. Whenever they did that. Whenever they actually called it Australia. That's what. That's when Australia Day should be. Fucking strange ass. Um, oh, hey, are you here? One second, my girl's home. Uh, hang on, I'll open the door for you. Hi, I'm learning about Australia Day. Do you want to learn? Hey, um, I'm testing a theory. Why, why do we celebrate Australia Day on the 26th? Because it's the day that they chose? No, but why did they choose that day? Come sit here. The microphone's really sensitive. Yeah, it's yeah, it's filming. Um, so why why is it January twenty sixth? Well, they say it's because that's when we landed in Australia. That's what I thought. Well, no, I never actually because I haven't researched it, so I don't know. I I just I just yelled. That's for the common. Yeah. How long were you yelling for? Oh, look, I've been going for like twenty minutes, <laughs> and I was yelling incorrectly about how we should change it because that's when we landed, but not when it was called Australia. They called it Possession Island before Australia. Who? Captain Cook. That's not why we shouldn't celebrate Australia Day. They called it Possession Island. Yeah, that's rude as fuck, isn't it? Why didn't? Why did we ever change it? It's the perfect name. No, I think it reflects our culture. <laughs> that's mine now. Sorry, yeah. Aboriginals. Everyone, Possession Island Day. Woo! Let's get drunk. <laughs> yeah. So I no. The reason why they do it. I was looking at this history of yeah. Australia Day. The reason why. They do it on the 26th. So Captain James Cook landed on the 22nd of August. Mm-hmm. But um, they we celebrate on the 26th because uh, Arthur, F- Arthur Philip f- landed a bunch of 11 convict ships. So that's when he started fucking Prison Island. Ah. We shouldn't celebrate it then. We should celebrate no, it. That's when we, we came to Australia because we didn't come to Australia on the 22nd of August. What, the, the white no, rapists? You, you've read it wrong. Look, it says that on the 22nd of August, he landed on a small island off yeah, the coast of New South that, Wales. We don't cel- I thought we celebrated it because Captain James Cook landed. We actually celebrate it because Arthur Phillip, whoever that is, brought a bunch of rapists on boats and started up a fucking prison. Right? 
it was actually called Australia. We should celebrate it here when, when it was called Australia in 1818. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, we should change the date. Thoughts? I just don't care. <laughs> I know. Nobody cares. That's my whole point is no one actually gives a fuck about what day. Everybody just wants to get pissed. But as soon as they're like, oh, we should change the date, all of the white people are like, oh, you fucking, it's Australian culture. It's like, mate, it's a barbecue. We can pick any day to get drunk on, can't we? Yeah, exactly. It's like you're drunk 50% of the time anyway. Just get 100% drunk. So how much, on, how much longer? Um, on the podcast? Uh, I'm actually almost done. I'm going to do one email. Do you want to do the email with me? Okay, sure. All right. So it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. So this is the funny one. This, this amused me. Uh helping my mate find his future wife hey cunt first up i want to say how proud i am of uh the comedy special taping blah blah blah. thank you mate um not much of a question but more of a story i think you'll appreciate and a call to arms i don't know how to respond to this this is the problem um anyway as i previously mentioned myself and my friend attend the friday recording of your comedy special and i feel like he owes you some gratitude for helping him discover his future wife Oh, people are picking up at my shows. This is good. Yeah. Um, Before going to the show, my mate and I called Matt. Let's call him Matt because that is his actual name. Okay. Good idea. Um, My mate and Matt was standing outside so I could sink a few cans to make seeing you perform more bearable. You can't. Uh, And we noticed this girl who instantly made Matt's jaw drop. She was tall and blonde, and if I'm honest, we couldn't find one flaw on her, except for one thing. She was wearing a Lewis Spears t-shirt. So as we watched her turn and walk towards Alex Theatre, I realized that there may be hope for my mate yet. We decided to make our way to the lobby and wait to be seated, but everywhere we went, we kept spotting her in the crowd, standing out like a beacon amongst the crowd of neckbeards and edgelords that is your fan base. Look, cunt. You know what? Wait a, wait a minute. Is this the daughter of Mandy? Hang on. Don't read ahead in the fucking oh, email. Are you guys going out now? Don't read ahead. Again. Okay. Don't read. No, we're not saying her name. I know her name. We're not revealing it yet. Don't read ahead in the email. Really Shush. Okay. okay. Shh. Sick mom. Be silent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so every fucking person who comes to my shows are like oh look at your audience man it's like dude you're part of the fucking audience do you think you're in it? you're special everyone's like oh man what do you think about all these people in the crowd i'm like oh, they're the people who come to my shows they're awesome and also you don't look every person who bags my crowd looks worse <laughs> right I know because they tell me they go oh look at these guys in the crowd they're nerds it's like yeah so are you but so how, am I in wait, fact who, who has ever said that in person if you're just getting by email you don't know what the people who are bagging your crowd look like I googled the guy's name oh. all right <laughs> everyone every now and then every show I do there's a few people that are like man this is your crowd it's like yes bro to be honest they're they're compared to other people they're quite nerdy yeah they are but like they're you've, you've brought out a bunch of nerds yeah because I I am also a nerd. Yeah. Exactly. Like attracts like. But you know what? I've been to other sh- other people's shows mm. and my crowds are fucking the best. No, they're great. They're, cause I've, I've obviously organised a lot of the shows that you've done and your crowd is really respectful of the venue, apart from that time in Brisbane <laughs> where someone left a swastika on this touch screen. Oh, yeah, that was rude as fuck. So there was... <laughs> I forgot about that. I never told that story. All right, so oh. in Brisbane, there was like these touch screen map things that they were playing advertising on you know those things that they're in shopping centers and stuff they'll like, these you draw on, like draw on them with the touch i don't know no you couldn't it, it was no it was literally just um an advertisement thing and and while people were lining up walking past this thing and the line was taking a while because i meet everyone some guy figured out how to turn the advertising off turned the screen into a computer opened up paint and then just left it there, and everyone walking past started drawing shit on paint on this thing. And some genius left a swastika there. So that's something that I had to fucking explain to the venue. No, being, you didn't. No, well, no, I was I, worried that I would have to. I, no, you, no, you weren't. You thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit funny. No, because I didn't see it because I was just so busy working. And then you told me after we left, you said, by the way... <laughs> 
you told me a couple of weeks after, you said, by the way, I saw this at the venue. And I was so pissed off at you that you saw it and you didn't close it down. Oh, that's right. I, I wasn't annoyed. You were annoyed. Yeah, I was annoyed because I had organized the gig and I didn't want to be known as the person who booked the gig where someone left a swastika on their advertise, hacked their advertising screen and drew a swastika. Yeah, that's pretty rude, huh? And I'm like, Lewis, why didn't you do anything about it? He goes, oh, I thought it was funny. I saw it on the way out and it wa- I, th- I thought it was funny because it was just like, of course someone's done that like they just they just see a, a fucking place to draw and they're like what's the most offensive thing i can draw I was like that there were a couple of dicks there already so someone had to fucking go too far um anyway what were you talking about? this email all right no but what were we talking we were talking about something we were, talk- oh, we were yeah, talking about my fans yeah generally aside from that yeah right so <laughs> stop reading ahead in the email this is why i put it on my lap because every time we do these emails you read ahead and you're like oh my god and the listener hasn't heard any of it all right. Otherwise, I'll, I'll let, tell you some spoilers about it. Shush. I've, I've also Have read it too. Have we talked about what you did in Star Wars? Be silent, okay? No, we haven't talked about Hold that. Hold on. Can I tell them? Yeah. So we went for a, a movie. We saw... What was the... God, what film did we see? We saw Justice League. It was oh, sick. Yeah. It was and actually really good. I've got this new thing. I've told all the listeners about it. I don't watch movie trailers yeah. because it, it just shows you the best part of the so movie. Lewis doesn't watch trailers now because he just doesn't want it to be spoiled. And he's been successfully avoiding the Star Wars trailer quite in Yeah, I've been one. avoiding the fuck out of that like billion dollar marketing budget. I've I've even seen like like posters and I've averted my eyes. I don't want no, I don't want I want, I'm going into that movie fucking blind. Anyway, so the the ad came on for Star Wars and Lewis rather resignedly goes, I guess I have to watch it now. And I said, oh, block, block your ears, close your eyes. So he's sitting there like this <laughs> and I'm laughing at him. And then I said, oh, why don't you just leave? And he did. <laughs> I left the cinema. I just paused until I could, I could stop hearing like uh, brass he music. Got up, he got up out of his seat in the middle of the movies and he walked to the back and he left. And I text him when he was allowed to come back in. Yeah, I'm not watching that fucking trailer before I, I see the movie. You, I should have texted you earlier and then you come Nah, I would have I would have left you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me read this email we can finish, okay? So, she was tall and blonde. I couldn't find a flaw on her except she was a fan of you, blah blah blah. Um everywhere we went, she was we spotted her. It wasn't until after the show that we realized that this girl was none other than the girl from episode 50. This girl was the daughter of the great and legendary Mandy Speared Sunday's Hero. That's from episode 50 of the live podcast. Mandy, we give you our praises. You are Stop the it. coolest mom. <laughs> so nice. So drunk. Stop encouraging her. Such a heckler. Yeah. Um, all right. Bang on daughter as well. So, uh, stop hitting on my fans. I know that this may be a bit of a long shot. But what a great love story it is. To Lewis and anyone listening to this podcast, I would like you, nay, I need you to help me find this girl and save Matt from the cruel hands of loneliness. Have a shit one, Daniel. I don't think it's quite a love story yet, except for a guy saw a girl that was hot and decided that he wants her. Yeah, that's not a love story, bro. Maybe because you saw a girl and you were too much of a pussy to talk to her and now you want me to save... Now you want me to save this shit? It's like, mate, I'm not, I'm not the fa- fucking fairy godmother of Cinderella. I don't make glass shoes, okay? Okay. So what I think is, it shouldn't be. Should we introduce Matt and Mandy's daughter? We should vet Matt to see if he's suitable suitor. Man, don't worry. Dude, Mandy, I don't I'm even know if this girl. I'm not gonna let some no good boy come and ask out your daughter. Yeah. Okay. No uh, okay. Well, I think. Let's get Facebook. Hang let's on. Find hang him. on. No, him. we're not doing this. Why we're not? we're getting ahead of I ourselves. Because we don't even know if this girl is interested in meeting up with some guy who is too creepy to talk yeah, okay, to so her. Okay, so what we can do, right, we can vet Matt, see if he's okay, and then we can do it like Bumble. We can give her his details. Yeah, we leave it up to her, okay? Yeah, I'm saying. So, if this girl is listening, email me. No, we have to first get the computer. We're, We're not, Matt. no, because you're... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, oh, because you think I'm going to be mean. Yes, you are going to be fucking <laughs> mean. I know the type of person that you are. Anyway, I actually don't. I don't have his name because it's all ri- it's written in notes. I don't have my emails up. I don't have his name, oh, but no. it, I looked him up. Like I don't know. He seems just like a normal guy. Um, normal is not good enough for Mandy's daughter. Yeah. Can all right. So. I'll stop. I'll 
Okay, do you want me to leave you alone? Or are you no, I'm going to wrap it up. So, it, Mandy's daughter, if you would like to me to forward on this guy's details to you, I can do that. Email me and, uh, I don't know. <laughs> look. What about, what? okay, I have a better idea. Uh-huh. How about, we look him up, we send the details to Mandy, and if Mandy approves, we can set up a blind date. No. <laughs> Mandy, if you're into this. <laughs> what is it podcast at loosebeers.com yeah podcast at loosebeers.com also send me some questions I'm running low on questions as you can tell because I'm now I'm playing a fucking matchmaking service Woo! so uh, yeah Mandy's thanks stop it okay this isn't happening um, unless she wants it to happen so let this be a lesson to all of you if you see if you see a girl and you're interested in her just talk to her because otherwise you're going to have to email me and I'm probably not going to help you <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, guys. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one.